Hello, and welcome to the Gamer's Advocate. My name is Adam Bankhurst, and today we're talking about Spider-Man Homecoming. Now, and this is your spoiler warning, I'm going to be talking about full spoilers for Spider-Man Homecoming. So if you have not seen this movie, pause this and come back when you have seen the incredible movie that is Spider-Man Homecoming. So, here we go. First off, can we just talk about how awesome the Captain America school videos were? And, I mean, I just love the fact that they throw in these little humorous points, like when he was pointing to the teacher on this side and he was standing to the other side. I just love those little touches, and especially at the end. If you have stayed till the end of the credits, and if you've seen a Marvel movie, you know that you need to stay till the end of the credits. Captain America had one last video talking about patience and then have waiting so long for something and having it disappoint and learning the lesson and then it's just ending and it was just such a stab at these people always waiting for credits and the kind of thing that marvel itself created but it was just such a wonderful jab and just played to the tone of this movie which is humor 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 but it had a heart and it had a story to tell because the movie starts right away with Michael Keaton and his crew cleaning up the collateral damage that was caused by the Avengers trying to save the universe and being kicked out by the U.S. Department of Damage Control, which is a part of the Avengers and Tony Stark and all these guys. So he was being shunned and he mentioned that he bought all these trucks for this job and he put everything on the line and then they just kind of threw him to the side. And he had this skin in the game and he lost a lot because of the Avengers feeling that they own everything and they have the right to do this stuff and, and they sit on their high horses and can do whatever they want and they don't think about the little man even though obviously they're trying to save the world. They don't think about the consequences of, your, of their actions. And this is really felt throughout the whole movie. I mean, Peter Parker is learning to become Spider-Man and he's very new at it and what I loved also about Spider-Man Homecoming is it didn't tread the familiar how he gets bit by the spider and he learns how to become and Uncle Ben dies with that stuff is already gone it's in the past we know it's happened but he's still learning the ways and he causes a lot of collateral damage which happens in the Avengers when he's swinging through neighborhoods, he runs through fences or knocks down a barn or interrupts a pool party and splashes all the guests. I mean, this is a man who, this is a boy, excuse me, 14 years old or 15, as he said, who doesn't really have a full grasp of his powers. And there's just like little nods, especially even to video games where they always talk about how Spider-Man could connect to anything with his webs. And he gets to a golf course and he tries to swing to chase someone and he can't get it. So he just shoots webs into the air and then just you, there's a scene of him just sprinting through the golf course. But you as an audience member are on this journey with Peter Parker and Spider-Man and are learning along with him. And you're also getting the perspective of his friend Ned, who is the everyman, who is the, the people in the audience who aren't Spider-Man, who would sit there in amazement and like, my best friend is Spider-Man? What is happening? And it's just cued so perfectly when he's holding the Death Star, which is another Disney-owned property, and it just falls on the floor and shock that his best friend is THE Spider-Man. But he was a great character trying to be the man in the control seat and he spins around once he finally gets his wish. And he blurts out to the pretty girl at school that Peter Parker knows Spider-Man even though Peter Parker made him swear not to say anything. And there's just these little moments in between him chasing these villains throughout the city and dealing with this crime that it gets to the heart of what people love about this high school drama and learning the ways and learning how to interact with the world. And they just play it so perfectly. And of course, we have the obvious tie to the Marvel Extended Universe and Iron Man playing a prominent role and happy Jon Favreau being his kind of handler. And they really treat him... I mean, first of all, we know that Tony Stark clearly cares for this kid and believes in him, but he doesn't show it outwardly. He shows some tough love, and the whole beginning of the movie is... Peter Parker, like he's waiting for a date or a girl and checking his phone and texting and just waiting and canceling all of his plans and getting into trouble in school. He's falling behind in some of his classes and some of his events because he's just waiting to be called up because he believes that he's ready, even though it's kind of shown that maybe he isn't so ready. And it's taken to the next level when Tony Stark takes his suit away and says, you're done. And he has to become Peter Parker. And he gives one of the most valuable lessons. And it's very important that you can take with many aspects of your life that the suit doesn't make the man. The man makes the suit. And if he's not comfortable as Peter Parker, then, he, then Tony Stark is right and he has no right being Spider-Man. And he learns that, that he does have the inner strength. And like all of us do, that it's in there, even if we're afraid to find it. And maybe we don't believe in ourselves. But once we gain that confidence and show ourselves what we're made of, then really anything's possible. 
And that is your optimistic message from Adam Bankhurst. We'll be here till Tuesday. Thank you very much. And of course, we have to talk about the big plot twist that Liz's father was Vulture. <laughs> I mean, I did not see that coming. A lot of people, I've heard audible gasps in the theater because even though it's kind of a cliche, coincidental movie trope, it was still a nice surprise that you kind of weren't expecting. And they played it up with the wonderful music and him getting ready and trying the new ties on and learning how to tie a tie. And then he opens the door and then boom, you're hit with this twist. And for the next five, 10 minutes, the scene is just so tense. Because Peter, I mean, he can't even focus. He can't compliment or do anything without this look on his face that he, his life is shattered again. He tries to enjoy happiness and enjoy being a normal teenager, but he's too deep in this and he just can't enjoy it. And it's very sad. I mean, Peter Parker really never succeeds at being Peter Parker. He misses the decathlon. He misses helping Ned become the cool kid at the party. He misses homecoming. He misses everything because his one, his main focus is being Spider-Man. And it's a tough balance, and I think they really played into that, that time is short and choices matter and they come and go and you really have to choose. And his whole life was Spider-Man and everything kind of fell by the wayside. But yeah, as I said, he just, that whole scene with him driving in the car and giving him a choice and saying, you saved my daughter, so I will save your life. We're even, square, you can move on, stop bothering me, but he just wouldn't give up. He just couldn't give up because he knew how important this was. And there were just good messages throughout this movie. And it just felt, I don't know, I mean, obviously it's fantasy and it's whatever, but it felt real and grounded. Whereas some of these other Avenger movies and some of the other big summer blockbusters like Transformers, I'm looking at you, are just action, 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 action. And it gets, I don't know, in all honesty, it just gets old to me a little bit. I mean, it's exciting, but you don't remember it once the credits start rolling. And this movie, I'm going to remember for a very, very long time. And I can't wait to see multiple times and see Tom Holland come back in the Avengers Infinity War and hopefully another Spider-Man movie. And I just cannot say enough good things about that. So that is kind of where I'm going to end the spoiler talk of Spider-Man Homecoming. I mean, there's so many more things to talk about, but it's just still fresh in my mind. And I'm still just so excited about this movie. I mean, I, we didn't talk about Karen and the suit and him naming it and learning the ways and trying to stop these bad guys and his suit malfunctioning because he took off the training wheel protocol and kill mode was activated and his eyes got super small and red and the movie ending with him denying the Avengers and Aunt May walking in on him and saying, what the p cut to credits? I mean, it was there were so many little moments that I'll be thinking about and I'm probably forgetting right now because like I said, I just got out of the movie, but I wanted to talk to you guys and just share with you how much I loved this movie and how I can't recommend it enough if you haven't seen it, which I don't know why you would have gotten this far. Shame on you, but hey, to each his own, right? But yeah, that is Spider-Man Homecoming. One of my favorite movies I've seen in a very long time, and one that I think will be a great addition to the Marvel Extended Universe. So that's my talk on Spider-Man and Spider-Man Homecoming, and I really hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you got to go see the movie, and I'd love to know your thoughts. Send me an email at adam at thegamersadvocate.com. Tweet at me at Adam Bankhurst or The Gamers Advocate at Gamers Advocate. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Subscribe to us on iTunes. Leave a comment below. Become a part of the conversation and become a part of the Gamers Advocate family. So I can't wait to talk to you guys next week about whatever news may break or topics may fly into my mind. But I can't thank you enough for joining me on this journey with Peter Parker and Spider-Man. And I hope, more than anything, that you have a great day and or night. Thank you. And what the...